YouTube as a full-time job, is it honestly a good idea? You know, realistically, this is something that I've been thinking about for quite a while. Honestly, like, I want to say maybe a few years now. I've never really been an advocate for saying that YouTube as a full-time job is something you should definitely try and strive to have. I don't think that it's really much of a well sought after end goal as so many people may believe. I mean, as a YouTuber myself, which I hate that word, I don't wanna call myself a YouTuber because I don't really think I deserve that kind of status. But as someone who does create content for YouTube every once in a while, it's not really my goal to make this my full-time job. However, so many other people on this platform actively strive every single day to make this their living. And don't get me wrong, YouTube as a full-time job would be amazing. I wouldn't have to go anywhere and I would just be able to, you know, hang out, talk to you guys, and just speak about topics that I find fairly interesting or that the people who watch my content find fairly interesting. In this video, I am going to cover a few little points about why or why not it's a good idea to use YouTube as your main source of income and maybe just kind of throw in some little bits of opinionated shit here and there. I do want to say that I honestly think that the internet is way too young for us to say definitely whether or not YouTube as a full-time job is a solid idea. I mean, guys, the internet's only been around for like a few decades. It's really not been here for that long, which is a really scary thing to say because within the last 20 years, the amount of people that have gone online and made online in general, not just YouTube, as the platform for their main source of income is a very scary thing to think of. And you'll hear me say throughout this video that it's scary this, it's scary that. I, I want to say it's scary. And I'll, and I'll cover some other opinions as I continue throughout the video. But the main reason as to why I think it's scary is because everything on the internet, especially YouTube, is entirely based on relevance. And the problem with that is when everything's based on relevance, you're constantly fighting for the top part of the platform that you're on in an effort to grow even bigger than you already are. Because, you know, let's face it, you're not going to want to be stuck at 200 subscribers for the rest of your life. I mean, I know I don't. I'm going to keep making content to try and grow my subscriber base and in turn have, a, I guess, a bigger community. It's a weird word to say, but I guess a bigger community of people who like to enjoy my content and talk with me and, you know, watch my videos and give their opinions and whatnot. But since everything is based on relevance, I guess I'm kind of forced to make content that is interesting to the people that are watching my stuff. And of course it has to be interesting. Like, duh, I shouldn't have said it like that. I, what I should say is I always have to intrigue you guys more than the other person that would be on the recommended page or in the search bar or in the recommended section of a video that you guys were previously watching. YouTube is a constant battle for relevance and it's also a constant battle for content interest. So essentially you're constantly fighting with people on this platform in order to gain that one extra click which is a horrifyingly scary thing to think of i know a lot of people who make youtube videos don't necessarily think to themselves hmm i hope that out of the millions upon millions upon millions of videos on this platform at least a few people click on mine because in reality when you begin a youtube channel that's not the first thing you're thinking of the first thing you're thinking of is what could be or what you could become you never really think of the problems that come along with having a youtube channel or along with creating content i don't necessarily think it's too much of an issue for me but what happens with this fight for relevance or fight for content interest is i constantly have to think of a video that is going to be interesting enough to grab some clicks but also interesting enough to grab new clicks some of you guys who watch my content who are subscribed come and see like every single video i post and i'm so unbelievably fucking grateful for you guys you have no idea like believe me when i say but in order to grow a youtube channel you have to get the new clicks as well so i have to make content that's interesting enough to not only hit my subscribers on a level of intrigue but people that i've never met before or people that have never seen my videos on a level of intrigue so everything is based on relevance and content interest and in reality you can get run out or burn out from trying to think of interesting things and if you're a daily youtube poster i guess i'll say then trying to find ideas is going to be an incredibly hard thing to do i mean i know some people can just play games and just do gameplay channels and whatnot like what was so popular only a few years ago but that's not necessarily the best way to keep your audience entertained unless your audience is children in that case if anything in that case you have to be able able to hit the attention span of other children which means that you're gonna have to throw up a lot more i guess what i'll say is loud content something that involves a lot of emotion a lot of interest and doing that daily can really break somebody i do want to state some people who have successfully done and have not successfully done youtube for a living some of the people who have not successfully done 
YouTube for a living are Sky Does Minecraft, Wings of Redemption, FPS Russia. And the commonalities of all of these people is that they were either burnt out from making the content constantly, the constant awareness that their social image must be maintained on this platform, along with the slip ups that can result in a loss of viewership. Again, a lot of people who make their YouTube channel for the first time or have started posting for a year don't necessarily think of what could happen down the road of if I screw up in real life, I could really affect my business. A lot of people don't necessarily look at YouTube as a business. I know I don't really, I don't want to look at you guys as like a price tag or anything. That's completely fucking scummy. And I don't make any money off of these videos either. So it's not like I'd be hitting that kind of category of this platform anytime soon, which I'm actually kind of grateful for because I'd rather just make the content rather than make the money off of it specifically. That would be unbelievably awful to think of. Slip ups can result in a loss of viewership. I mean, if you just look at Wings of Redemption or Sky Does Minecraft, the issues that they had with their platform platform or other people have caused their viewership to completely drop along with the fact that sky does minecraft didn't really want to play minecraft anymore which also resulted in a drop of viewership which can be tied back to content interest the content interest of sky does minecraft's viewer base was primarily minecraft that's the whole point of the channel and when he said he didn't want to do minecraft anymore the viewership completely plummeted not to mention the obvious problems that happened outside of youtube which i will not get into because i think that's way too personal to really cover but I will say that anything that goes on outside of YouTube can result in your YouTube image being defamed or completely destroyed. And it really is a scary thing to think of. It's basically the same idea as a celebrity. Any kind of celebrity, any kind of artist who does anything bad or does something to, I guess, make their image look a little bit worse than it already is can directly result in the viewership or the interest of their content. The thing that happened with FPS Russia, I would say is burnout and a lawsuit that happened against him. I don't want to get too much into that either. I will leave everything up to interpretation and discovery to you guys. This is not a video about me covering these YouTubers. I'm simply using them as an example of why YouTube for a living is probably not the best idea but of course with any good essay or with any actual presentation of anything you need to cover the opposite side i'm not here to say that it's 100 bad i'm actually looking for a genuine answer as to why it may be good or bad i right now am generally leaning towards the side of no i don't really think it's a good idea but i do want to cover the people who have successfully done youtube for a living and some of those people are of course you guys are going to know all these names markiplier pewdiepie and jacksepticeye but the thing is the commonalities with all these people is that they've been on youtube for literally years like since the platform started basically they all have loud personalities and they all cater to younger audiences. And if you know anything about the YouTube algorithm or how YouTube's viewership or I guess their engagement rate is, you would know that younger audiences are typically wider audiences who are more attention seeking. If you've ever been over to a family member's house, you've probably seen their kid, or if you have nephews or nieces, you've probably seen them sitting on an iPad just watching YouTube videos. And the thing is YouTube as a whole has a autoplay button and those autoplay videos will constantly roll to the next like, you know, millionth view video Video, which typically ends up being Markiplier, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye. And that's just disregarding the fact that these people have millions upon millions of subscribers already. So by catering their content towards younger audiences and having a much louder personality will in turn result in these younger audiences being a lot more entertained by the people who are making funny sounds or emotions or doing something cool in the video game. Coupled with that, it all ends up being a lot better of a job in the end because your viewership is going to be tenfold than it would be trying to target people of my age who are 21 22 maybe even above so a pretty solid handful of the people who have done youtube successfully for a living do cater to these younger audiences which i guess you can say makes it harder for youtubers who have a much older audience to maintain youtube as a full-time job because not only do they have to make incredibly interesting content but they have to go about a different way of getting the attention of people who are older because i can tell you right now i'm not gonna watch a video that involves someone just screaming at the top of their lungs and playing a video game even if the content is absolutely fucking amazing or even if what they're doing in the video game is something incredibly hard to do i'm most likely not gonna watch it because it's not gonna target the vibe of content that i genuinely like or that people in my age range genuinely like another thing about doing youtube is that once you're deemed irrelevant it's incredibly hard to continue growing i mean listen if i bring up the word irrelevant the first thing most of you guys would probably think of is rice gum the person who was constantly telling everybody else that they were irrelevant and is now irrelevant himself and the only reason why i'm saying that about him is because he's a fucking dirtbag so there's a quick explanation as to why i talked to him about that in that light but yeah once you're deemed irrelevant on youtube it's incredibly hard to continue growing 
once you are targeted as this person who has a falling viewership or a falling subscriber base or even worse if you've ever seen those fallen from videos i don't know the, the exact name i think it's like fall from grace videos on youtube where it'll be like the fall of and then like the youtuber's name that shit really fucking ruins somebody's viewership it immediately makes everybody think badly about them or poorly about them and in turn it makes nobody in that age range because that would be a video that would be targeted towards people 18 and older it wouldn't make them want to go over to their videos or subscribe or do anything like that because another person's probably well constructed video told them how bad their content is as of now or how bad of a person they are or whatever the case may be so it does become incredibly hard to grow again once you've become irrelevant on top of that all of your content has to be consistent it has to be consistent along with the fact that it has to be interesting and doing this kind of thing leads to burnout constantly thinking of a very interesting video over and over and over especially if you're a daily youtuber is incredibly hard and i feel like a lot of people might end up cutting corners if they do daily youtube videos or if they do youtube as a living because if you don't post like more than at least once a week you're probably not going to make that much money or enough money that you would like to have have, essentially in a competition with an actual job versus doing YouTube. YouTube is more focused around being at home rather than actually going out to like some other business and working for them. So for the majority of people, I would assume that the income that they would make on YouTube should be just as good or better than the job that they could possibly get outside, most likely with like a college degree or something like that. So constantly trying to make interesting and consistent content becomes really, really difficult again, especially as a daily YouTuber. On top of that, if you do make a lot of money and if you are these kinds of people who make millions of dollars, a year I can guarantee you that at least maybe 75% of you guys maybe less that might be a little bit too far of a stretch have seen people who have made millions of dollars online have the income go to their head the first thing that happens with a lot of people that become incredibly popular is they end up shunning their audience or they end up targeting the money specifically and kind of getting rid of the importance of the viewership or the fan base that they've created amongst the years I think the best example of income going to your head would just be celebrities in general because just going on twitter for two seconds will immediately give you guys a pretty proper look as to how celebrities act versus how a normal person acts because i can guarantee you they are not the same thing in any light also it's really not healthy to let a website dictate your life if your job is youtube i really don't think that having one website that isn't actually a like tangible thing is a good idea to let dictate your life i honestly think that having your main source of income coming from youtube wouldn't necessarily be a very great idea because if anything happens with the website and everyone knows the state of YouTube is fucking garbage, then your job is directly reflected. Anything that happens in the future can relate back to your income. I mean, if you just think back to the adpocalypse that only happened a few years ago, a lot of people were losing money on their videos and that was YouTube as a whole. That was every content creator on there that was having a super hard time trying to make the money that they were originally making because of this problem with all the ads on the website. So I don't think it's healthy to let a website dictate your life. You don't know what's going to happen with YouTube. You don't even own it. You have no idea what's going to happen within the future. Not to mention the depression, anxiety, and other mental disorders that come with constant work online. I can guarantee you guys that if you sat at a computer for hours upon hours a day, just doing editing and not actually doing anything that you would genuinely want to be doing, like playing a video game or talking to other friends and whatnot, and you do that like every single day, you are going to start getting way more fucking depressed. Like that's just kind of hand in hand. It's not really healthy to sit at a computer for hours upon hours a day. I don't think that sitting at a computer for hours upon hours a day, editing videos, recording videos, writing out videos, searching for what's trending on YouTube, searching for what's trending on Twitter, trying to figure out ways to improve your other stuff, along with live streaming if you've gotten that big. I think spending that much time on a computer is just not healthy at all. So my overall impressions about this entire thing, and these are all personal, so if you have a differing opinion, that's completely fine. Let me know in the comments what you guys do think about everything that I've expressed here or anything that I haven't covered. But my overall impressions are that YouTube is not something that you should let plan your life for you. It's also not something that is worth fighting for relevance because it's not healthy. On top of that, comparing yourself to others in the YouTube space is not healthy at all. I mean, comparing yourself in real life to other people is already an incredibly hard task to not do and people do it automatically. And the thing is with being on YouTube and looking at your subscriber count go up or looking at your likes go up or your dislikes bar go up, you're gonna start comparing yourself to other YouTubers most likely in the same category or comparing your own self to your content and wondering whether or not it's worth it. I think it's incredibly unhealthy to do something like that. Also, the chances of you growing or increasing your income is completely dictated by your fan base which I guess you can say for a lot of celebrities, but that's what ties it into relevance. You're constantly fighting for relevance in a platform that has 
millions of people who are just as good, if not better than you. And I'm not saying you shouldn't try, but I'm saying you should be aware of these kinds of things before you get into YouTube, before you start making content, or before you start thinking whether or not this is like the way to go. This is the life. This is exactly what you want to do. Definitely think about what I'm talking about before you take this head on. And the last point I want to make is thousands of celebrities have fallen off in the last decade. Why would it be any different for famous YouTubers? I've already covered a few people in this video who have fallen off since they have began their channel originally. And I don't want to say fallen off, but it really is a good term to use in order for you guys to understand exactly where I'm coming from. I don't want to talk badly about these YouTubers because I don't necessarily think they deserve it at this point from all the hate that they've probably already gotten from their fan base or other people on YouTube who've made these fallen videos. But it is a really good term to use in order for you guys to get a good idea of what I'm talking about. But if thousands of celebrities have fallen off just within like the last decade, then you know, you gotta tie yourself into this. How are you different? How is your content gonna continue intriguing the people that view your content? How are you going to grow your fan base, grow your viewership? You can't just do the same thing on YouTube forever. The content that I'm making right now won't last on YouTube forever. And we're gonna have to do something down the line that changes everything up because if you don't grow your content, or you don't expand your content to new horizons, then what's gonna happen is you're just gonna plateau or decline. And that's why a lot of people have gotten declining viewership throughout the years. They don't ever adapt their content to what's new or what's going on in the world or this, this, and that, which is a really tough thing to try and take in because I know that doing the same thing over and over can seem a lot easier and a lot more appealing for you to do. But if you don't adapt your content to the changing tide of YouTube, then you're never gonna be able to continue growing, which is again, something you should definitely keep in mind if you plan on starting a YouTube channel. It's something that happens down the line, but constantly you know, getting few ideas here and there would be a very good thing for your content or a very good thing for your channel in the long run. But with that being said, guys, I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did like it, give it a like. If you didn't like it, then dislike it. Let me know what you guys think about everything in the comments section, or like I said before, if you have anything that you would like to express that I didn't cover, definitely let me know. I would like to hear from every single one of you guys. And at the end of the day, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. See you later.